In a previous video, I discussed the use of the cause and effect diagram overall. In this short segment, we'll discuss the macro and micro use of the fishbone. This is Nathan Crutchfield, and I will be using excerpts from Job Hazard Analysis, a text by James Routon and Nathan Crutchfield, published by Butterworth Heinemann. When breaking a job down into its individual components, we want you to think about the job as a whole, not just the sequence of steps. We discussed the job of changing a tire in a previous video. With this task in, or job in mind, picture a job as a funnel from which you must filter out the hazards and associated risk. Many of the elements may be listed in a job description uh, intended to instruct the employee on how to perform the job. At the top of this funnel, you have a large amount of information. As the job is analyzed, the job description is filtered into manageable subsets of steps. These steps are then analyzed for finer elements with specific tasks identified as necessary to complete each step. A second way of looking at the funnel is that the job as a whole has a number of inputs required. In this case, we're talking about changing a flat tire on a car. There are a number of steps to accomplish that, the first of which is to pull the car off the road. And under pulling the car off the road, there would be task-specific items required, such as parking clear of tra traffic, parking on level ground, setting the parking brake, etc. As a reference point in Chapter 9 of the text, Figure 9-2 provides a basic illustration of the overview of the process beginning with starting the process, reviewing the SOPs, and working through the breaking down of the job in steps and tasks. In the previous job hazard analysis video on the use of the cause and effect diagram, we showed how you would break out five ribs to identify the basic areas and information needed for changing a tire. There would be the basic steps, the tools, materials, and equipment, the environment in which you may be doing the changing of a tire, any rules, procedures, and protocols that are involved, and the people that might be involved or exposed to the changing of the tire. By using the cause and effect diagram at a macro level and the use of the five ribs as we've outlined here, you can step back away from the job of changing a tire and begin to see the interrelationships between the steps required, the tools, materials, and equipment required so that you can identify that everything's there, the environment, the procedures, rules, and protocols, and people. How do these all interact and do they all work together effectively? By drilling down to a micro level with regards to the steps required to do the changing of a tire, you can identify the subtask and issues that might be developing at that level and what are the needs at each individual step and what are the procedures or protocols required. In this case, we've outlined pull off the road, check for traffic, open the trunk, prepare for removing the tire, remove the tire, and replace the tire. Depending on the vehicle, obviously more might be needed. But for example, under the check for traffic, there's the exiting the car, and there would be issues from a risk and hazard standpoint there, whether or not the wheels should be blocked or are in need of being blocked properly, and then the setting of either flares or refl reflectors, preferably reflectors, and with regards to um, identifying and clearly showing that your vehicle is off of the side of the road, how are we going to open the trunk and loosen the spare tire, moving all the way around to the replacement of the tire and following all the procedures as outlined within the original policies and procedures and guidelines. In other words, we can look at the macro level and identify the relationships and do the policies, procedures, rules, and protocols clearly determine what is needed at each step and subtask required? Are the people available that can successfully and effectively 
without risk and hazard to themselves, change the tire, and what kind of environments might you expect, and are you prepared through all your safety equipment, tools, materials, etc., to do the task in a safe manner. The use of the cause and effect diagram can bring many details together in a graphic manner that can give depth to your analysis of each job, the steps and tasks required to accomplish that particular job. This is Nathan Crutchfield. For additional information on safety process improvement, please go to www.emeetingplace.com. Also check out our series on effective safety program development found on iTunes under eMeetingplace.